ago, a nine-tailed fox suddenly appeared. Its tails lashed out, smashing mountains and sending tidal waves crashing to the shores. The ninja rose up to defend their villages. Hold the attack and wait for the fourth Hokage! It's getting closer! Don't let it near the village! For all of the video games that have come out over the past few years based on the wildly popular Naruto manga and anime series, very few have ever really had the ambition to, to reach people outside of the established Naruto fan base. This is kind of the big thing that separates Naruto Rise of a Ninja from Ubisoft from its predecessors. It's also the first Naruto game that's been developed outside of Japan and it definitely takes a target for Western audiences. This is a game that's sure to appeal to fans of Naruto, but it also does a pretty good job of introducing the story and the characters, making it accessible for first timers. The big problem with Rise of a Ninja is that it spreads itself too thin. There are a lot of interesting gameplay elements here that just aren't fleshed out enough. The story of Rise of a Ninja covers what's basically in the first 80 episodes of the Naruto anime. By starting at the beginning of the story, the game's able to introduce first-timers into the crazy world of ninja magic that is Naruto. You'll start off at the beginning of the ninja exams and then over the course of the game, which if you tear through it and focus solely on the story elements, you get through in about six hours, all the way through to the end of the Chunin exams. Despite how much story that covers, you never really get a sense of how epic everything is. The game relies on actual cutscenes from the anime to tell most of the story, which adds an air of authenticity, but it has its problems as well. Uh, whenever you're not looking at the game from a kind of cutscene perspective where you're zoomed in close on the characters, the game looks really good. The environments look really sharp, they have a lot of detail to them, the characters animate really nicely. Generally speaking, it's really good looking, except when you get up close and you see the characters' faces, which never really animate and which look kind of weird and pasted on. The emotive and dynamic qualities of the 2D animation uh, really put a spotlight on just how stiff the game looks up close in 3D. <laughs> You'll spend the majority of your time in Rise of a Ninja in the city of Konoha, which is Naruto's hometown. And it's really the most significant and amazing part of this game. This city has been fully realized, it's got a ton of detail, and it just feels really organic. It also has kind of a more realistic look than the characters, which are all very cartoony and cel-shaded, while the city of Konoha uses a lot more muted tones, creating a really nice contrast that feels very much in line with the source material. When you first start off the game, Naruto is a pretty standard third-person action hero. He can jump and run around, but he doesn't have a lot of vertical mobility, which is something that he earns over time through a series of abilities called Jutsu. There are three main types of Jutsu that Naruto will earn over the course of the game. There's Shadow Clone Jutsu, Sexy Jutsu, and Chakra Concentration. Now, Sexy Jutsu is not particularly useful, but Shadow Clone and the Chakra Concentration prove to be very, very valuable over the course of the game. Now you perform these jutsus by holding down the left trigger on the controller and then inputting a series of commands with both analog sticks. It never gets very complicated, but it does a pretty good job of kind of evoking the elaborate hand gestures that the characters do in the show. Part of what's interesting about Rise of a Ninja is how many disparate gameplay elements there are. When you're in Konoha, it's pretty much a third-person action game where you'll explore the city trying to collect coins that are hidden in various areas while also taking on side missions. It's a pretty good variety of activities and it does a good job of encouraging you to explore Konoha, but the activities never really change over the course of the game. They get harder, but they always feel kind of the same. That smells good. Thanks, Naruto. I did it! Whenever you take on missions that uh, take you outside of the city walls of Konoha, the feel of the world changes a lot. As organic and natural as Konoha feels, the areas outlying it feel much more linear and kind of like platforming levels, which essentially they are. One of the interesting little twists when you get outside of Konoha is that you'll occasionally have to travel to another location by jumping from branch to branch across trees. These little gameplay scenarios are really cool at first. Unfortunately, like some of the missions, they never really change. And so even though you're 
traveling to different areas from different places, these travel sequences never really feel any different. Another interesting gameplay twist in Rise of a Ninja is that whenever you get into a fight, the game actually cuts away to a one-on-one -on -one 3D fighting game engine. Uh, it's pretty accessible, and you can also use your jutsu abilities here, although ultimately you'll only use the Shadow Clone jutsu because it's the best offensive jutsu you have, uh, which ends up kind of making every fight feel the same, as you'll inevitably end up using the Shadow Clone jutsu at least once in every fight. Another problem is that you end up fighting the same types of enemies in this fighting game engine over and over again in the story mode. You'll occasionally get to fight with some marquee characters from the show, but you'll spend most of your time fighting bandits and bandit lieutenants, and it just kind of gets repetitive. The fighting game engine also serves as the basis for the game's multiplayer component, and in this context, the fighting game feels a little bit more fleshed out since you can play as a number of other characters. Their fighting styles can vary a bit, and the game is balanced pretty nicely. You can play the game locally against another player or over Xbox Live. There are standard one-on-one -on -one quick matches. While there's also this kind of interesting ranked match system called the Forest of Death exam, where you have to go through a series of ranked battles and whenever you lose, you reset back to the bottom of the pile. The fighting system, while fun and entertaining, is not particularly deep. Though at the same time, it does do a good job of conveying the feel of the show. The moves hit hard and there's a lot of stylish flash to it. Whenever you perform one of your jutsu abilities, you'll see this crazy dynamic action sequence. And there are actually little mini games that you have to engage in whenever a jutsu ability is activated. And these can differ from character to character and also between different jutsu abilities. There's just a lot of really cool stuff in Naruto Rise of a Ninja, particularly the city of Konoha itself, which is, again, really just cool to explore and, and mess around in. But a lot of the other ideas in the game just aren't fleshed out very well and end up repeating themselves over and over again. Fans of Naruto are certain to love this. This is far and away the most ambitious Naruto game so far. It covers a lot of really iconic moments in the series that fans are sure to appreciate. The game makes a stab at being accessible to people who aren't Naruto fans, and it's probably the most suitable Naruto game for non-Naruto fans so far, but there are enough problems with it that it's hard to recommend wholeheartedly.